standing up there and they talking about, okay, uh, roll your cigarette. They got this big old thing they talking about. What the hell is that? I'm talking about, oh, uh, your vaccination shots. Shots? Man, what you mean, shots? Yeah, we're going to draw your blood, then you pick you, give you all these shots here in your butt. I said, oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't wish for none of that. Just give me my gun and tell me who I got to kill. You know, what? Wait a minute. You got to get cleared. I said, now we come to no needle. You know, yeah, well, you're going to get this. I said, yeah, I'd like to see you and what army. I shouldn't have said that. You and what army, because they came with all the, all the military police, and they forced me to the ground, spreading me out, and just took their time at me. Clum, 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 clum. Drew the blood, pull. Man, when I get up from here, whoo, first one I catch is mine. So they listen and they, okay, we got to figure a way to get up and not, not let him grab one of us. He is sort of a big cut up man. I mean, I'm 210 pounds at the time. And uh, I got to admit to myself, mm -hmm. I was fine. Body all scoped it just right. And I, think I, I think I showed y'all my uh, army picture of the woman in uniform. And I showed y'all some other picture of me in the army with standing next to a beautiful young lady. Audrey, if you're still alive, reach out and, and holler at me through Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. Just reach out. I still got feelings for you. You were something special to me back then. But anyway, I joined the Tough Man Contest ball. And when it came time to fight him, we got in the ring. But when he seen me, he got back out of the ring. I'm like, where the hell is he going? They said that he quit. What you mean he quit? He can't do that. He said, he quit. But we're going to let you fight the next uh, test, which was Butterbean. I said, ain't no thing. So, of course. They rolled Butterbean out, and uh, he gets in the ring. Boy, he ain't got no neck. I'm like, okay. I got to study him and figure out where can I do the most damage. Hitting a person like that big in the belly, that ain't going to help. It might just bounce off. You might just hurt your own arm. So I'm getting in there. That didn't do anything. I'm like, okay. That ain't doing nothing to the top part of his chest. I said, okay, next thing I got to try to get up underneath that little short stubby neck. So, I think it was second round, got in there, rang the bell, he comes out. Said, Man, you need to hold your neck up. <laughs> of course, I said it real quick. Yeah, I don't know if he heard it or not, but I said, you need to hold your neck up, boy. Be a man. But I stepped to the side. He swung them big old who hey makers at me. I'm like, man, he trying to cook me in there or something? He never laid a glove on me, but I finally got up under that sideway. I boom, hooked him right in. That popped up. I seen it pop. I reached in. Boom, boom. He still standing there like, what the hell going on? I must have broke his neck or something. No, it wasn't broken neck. The boy was out. He just didn't move no more, but he was out on his field. So I told the ref, hey, what's wrong with this guy? He said, keep fighting, keep fighting. He didn't move, he didn't swing. I'm like, okay, something wrong with this man. He said, keep fighting, Mr. Crab. So I, oh, y'all want me to kill him? So I stepped to the side. Now, nah, Open my glove up as far as I could, and I'm finna, I'm finna crack him right in his nose, Hum, shove it right up into his brain. They seen that, and I guess they said, "Whoa!" They jumped in front of him. Okay, fight on. Take out a technical knockout. Look, knock out that motherfucker out, man. Uh, technical knockout. When we get out the ring, I go down there, and I'm like, "Man, what's going on, man? What y'all wanted me to do to that boy?" 
They were like, no, no, you had to put on the show. You know, just show and tell. That's how we make the money. I'm like, what well, you mind if I come think about it? Where's my money at? Fight's uh, over? I said, yeah, but we're going to go to uh, Texas. You're going to fight down there. Man, I ain't saying nothing about fighting in no Texas. So I go back, back in the back. Bruiser, which is my nephew, came up and said, hey, man, I got some guys that want to meet you. They called the best friends, the Brown Brothers. I'm like, <coughs> excuse me. They called the Brown Brothers. I said, what they want? Autograph or something? I said, no, they wanted to talk to you. Anybody could talk to me. You know, that's their rights. So, Reg came over and was talking to me. His brother Boo was with him. And so was his other two brothers. Well, all four of them was there. But Reg is the one that did the talking. He was like, man, you something else, big boy. You really laid in there. I was like, thank you, thank you. And I'm just standing there, kept saying, thank you, thank you. And then uh, he started talking, hey, man, uh, why don't you come hang with us, man? You're like, we finna go out and party and this and that. I said, well, I don't go to parties. I don't go out to do things like that. He said, man, we gonna pay for it. I said, that still don't make a difference, man. He said, man, check this out, man. Let me talk to you to the side, just me and you. We stepped to the side. He was talking, what he was saying. I said, that sounds good. I like to eat. He said, uh, Steve Soul Food's right there on, I said, yeah, I know about that. I never really sat in there. I usually just make my order, go get it, and go home. But all of them want to go there and eat since we're already downtown. So we go there and we order up. Boo galore. <laughs> so me and Randy, we, we basically talking about the food, about how we like to eat certain food, and we really enjoy ourselves. Boo basically was just standing around, picking out things, and he was like, yeah, big boy. I think uh, I'm bigger than you. I said, yeah, okay. Let me know when you wake up from that dream. <laughs> His other two brothers just made me laugh at him. He was, you know, giggle. Like, yeah, yeah, big boy cutting up jokes. So, uh, me and Reggie sat down. Who came over and sat down. Basically, all, all of the brown brothers, we sitting at the table. And uh, just before we get ready to eat, I said, ain't y'all gonna say prayer? <laughs> the whole table just bust out laughing. Like, oh, man. <laughs> While they were laughing, I was eating already. <laughs> he was like, oh, you just wanted to eat first. I said, hey, what can I say? I like food. <laughs> Randy smacked me on the back. <laughs> man, you almost made me cough up my chicken. He was like, yeah. Big boy. Man, you can really eat. I said, yeah. He said, man, man, man you need to talk. I said, okay, that's cool, well, well, whatever. Now, I go back down to Kowal Hall where the fight was, and while I'm standing there waiting on uh, my friend to go get my car, these two guys walks up to me. They white. I'm like, are they been around me or do something to me? Or are they undercover cops? One of the three. So I'm standing there, and I pulled them off. They were like, can we talk to you for a minute? I said, go ahead. They were like, uh, I'd like to offer you a thousand dollars. Hey man, I ain't into no gay stuff. You talking about no. <laughs> he says that I made a bet with him, the loser right here. He goes, man, man, skip that, skip that. He said, uh, I'd like to give you this thousand dollars. And I'm gonna offer you uh, a ring, a watch, and a bracelet if you come to my shop. I said, what's going on? He said, man, I just won the biggest bet off you for the fight you just won. Hmm. Yeah, okay, well, you won. Thanks for the money. Took it, put it in my pocket. He was like, well, if you come out to my shop, this is my business card. He gave me his business card. You get a free watch, a ring, a bracelet, and a neck. I said, yeah, right, okay. He said, Sandy, here go the car. You come. Just ask for me. Come in, pick what you want. Then he looked over at the other guy. Most of the stuff will be coming from his shop because I just won his shop. 
I'm like, what? He said, yeah, we got so hyped up in it that we said, we bet our shop. I, I bet you my shop that he going to lose. My man said, I bet you my shop that he going to win. Look at that big boy. He said, the other one's big too. That's Butterbean. He said, yeah, but the big boy looked like he wanted to really do some damage. I'm sitting there listening to him, my car pull up. I got in my car. I drove off. Yeah, matter of fact, it was the next Friday day when I got up, I was like, business car. So I talked to Jerry, hey man, uh, people saying that they want to, you know, give me some jewelry. He said, take it. I don't know, still sound right, man. Somebody giving me something? I ain't got to do nothing? He said, well, you told me that you wanted to fight, so you wanted to fight the man feel like he owed you because he wanted another man's shot. I said, okay, man, let's go. He said, what you mean, let's go? I said, you going to whoop me, bro. He said, okay, I'll just bull crap you. So we go down there, we go into the shop. And uh, I I asked for the guy that was on the car. He came out as soon as he seen me. Oh, hey, come around there and grab me, hug me, and tell me, oh, man, you, you don't know how good I feel. Look at all those bags over there. That's all. That guy shop, I got all the jewelry, but I didn't take everything. I just took all the good stuff. Man, he opened the bags and said, pick out a watch, ring, bracelet, and a necklace, man. I'm just looking around. I said, man, you ain't going to holler robbery is, you on me. You're like, no, man, I'm serious. Pick out anything. Man, look at this. Beautiful watch. I said, yeah, but I like this other watch over here better. Boulevard. He said, pick it if you want it. Take whatever you want. I put that on my wrist. I was like, hmm, okay, that's sweet. So I picked out the ring. Still watching. I picked out I picked out a bracelet, nugget bracelet for my other arm. And just when I was going to go for the necklace, he was like, hold on, hold on. Okay, here it come. He said, no, just come. You paired. No, I said, yeah, I don't trust no one. Jane was standing over there just looking. He got one hand underneath his armpit. And I knew he, uh, Jerry got, you know, something there. So I'm looking. He said, man, check this out. He pulled out this big fat bag, unrolled it, and these ropes, bolo ropes. I was like, what the heck? He said, this is what. Oh, this is what people are into now. I'm going to give you two of them. So, of course, I'm going to take the two biggest one I can find. So, I grabbed them two big ones, put them on my neck, came all the way down to my belly button. Picked out another one, came a little bit inside of the belly button. I'm like, Jeremy looked over like, <laughs> only thing they had to do now is put a lock on you and put you out back. <laughs> Change you up like a dog. <laughs> they do big old giant things on man. I said, hey. It's free. I didn't want to tell him, hey, I can have all this meltdown, make many rings and so <laughs> But I taste it. Then I go over to uh where Bruiser and them be hanging out at. And I'm sitting on the porch talking to Bruiser and he was telling me, yeah, man, everybody watched the fight that was there, man. They love you. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I just only did that because I wanted to take off some stress that I was. I mean, hell, you know I just got out. He said, yeah, I know, man. That's when this girl crossed the street and came out of her house. I looked. Man, she's kind of cute. My sister said, oh, and she, that's my friend. Call her over here. Call her over here. He, she called over here. And of course, Pat comes dashing across the street. I was like, damn. She looks like she really bubbly and happy, and she got a nice, well bounce. When she got there, she spoke to my sister. I'm sitting there in between. I'm like, Nobody speak to me. I said, uh, excuse me. Ain't y'all gonna speak to me? She said, Who are you? My sister said, Oh, that's my little brother, Boom. He just got out. Oh, just the one that you was telling me about that was in prison. Hey, sis. 
friend, oh no, oh no, she didn't say nothing bad. I'm like, oh, okay, because I, you know, I don't want nobody putting, you know, spending nothing bad on me. I'm a nice person. She looked somewhere, yeah, right. I said, come here, come here, give me a hug. She gave me a hug, and I gave her the biggest, tightest hug. Mm. So, okay, let me go. Oh, do I got to? Can I keep you? She said, let me go. You know, I got a boyfriend over there, and if he see me hugging up with you, he going to come over and act crazy. I said, well, that's going to be the last thing he do. <laughs> so we go inside my sister's house. While we was in there, her boyfriend comes over. And he talking about, hey, Pat, bring your such and such out of there. Like, really? Damn, girl. He speak to you like he's your master or somebody. So Pat go down there. And my sister talking about, that guy be jumping on it. I said, what? He be jumping on us. Well, let me go down there. So I go to the front porch and look. And he down there got her back wrist trying to drag it. So I jumps over down off the top porch out there on the ground. Because I'm still, you know, built nice and good. Boom. So man, let her go. He looked at me. Man, you stay out of this. This is my woman. I said, nah, if you're going to hit her and drag her like that too, I'll bust you up. Man, you ain't going to do nothing to me. Come on in. Your wish is my command. So I started headed for him. He realized that I wasn't going to stop, I guess, and he just took off running around the van. He kept running. I'm trying to chase him around his van. I said, man, this is a stupid move. So I stopped. Looked at him and told him, yeah, that's right. So I'm hyped up. I'm mad. So I bent down and grabbed the side of the van. The people on the way. Don't turn my van over. I look away. When I looked up, the guy had ran into the people's houses across the street. So I run over there and the people, oh no, please don't come up in here. Don't come up in here. This is our house. We have to send him out. Too late. He ran out their back door. So Pat came over and said, he going to really mess me up. I said, no, you're wrong. She said, he carries a knife. First time I ever did this in my life. Normally I don't, you know, brag, but I, whew, so do I. Pushed it back up in my sleep. She said, wow, that's a big night. I said, yeah, that's a little tuna opener. <laughs> so she like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I said, well, move up out of there. Hell, you can move in with me, which she did. And uh, she brought her kids. We moved into uh, my place and, uh, we kicked it off good, you know, and next thing I know, we was talking about getting married, which we wound up getting married, and uh, she won a house for one dollar. Back then, they had, you know, like the lottery. You win a house for a dollar. So we get into the house. Next thing I know, um, I had it fixed up, had the people come out and put in uh, enclosed your porch, but I also had them put bulletproof glass on it. I trust no one, you know. Pat didn't know about that was bulletproof. She just thought it was thick glass so can't, so can't nobody break it easy. But I let her stay there and I moved. I moved I moved out to my place. I've been at the place, but mainly I just stayed at my place and let her stay there with the kids. But I know when I ever go over there, I'm going to be sitting out here. I ain't worried about nobody getting to me. If they get to me, they're going to have a, a heck of a program trying to get off this block. Because me and my boy, Ansel, uh Marco, lived next door to me. He was cool. He was a cool brother. We used, we used to get into some shit. And, uh, I mean, the boy, I mean, the man was cool. He, matter of fact, we still cool with each other. Even as of today, we still cool. He know what the deal was and so forth oh. back then. But uh, we used to always hang out together. He, he used to like to eat too. He used to go with his girlfriend's house. I used to drive him over there. And he would get something to eat. Then he bring me some out. I didn't like going into people's houses. I don't know. But uh, we get back to uh, Orleans and she was like, why don't you be staying here with me at night? I said, well, you know, I like to, you know, work at night. 
but you own a landscaping place. I said, yes, I own a, also a janitorial place, which I do night work, fixing up the CT school down there. I got the contract with them, which I did. So, and plus, there's time to do, you know, things is at nighttime. Daytime, I did work too in the daytime, but most of the time, at nighttime. I ain't got to worry about no witnesses. You do it without witness, you good. But if you do it, you're doing it around people that seen you doing it. Oh, all the people that seen you, they're going to be the witness against you. So that's why I see people out there calling themselves hit men or this and that. Well, you out there doing it in front of people. People see you. Well, you a stupid hit man. Literally stupid. You want to do a perfect hit and not get caught or not have witnesses? And that's the main thing. You don't want witnesses. Do the hit without anyone. If you want to make it keep it straight up business, you want to take it to them straight to man to man, uno uno, okay, well, hopefully he don't know you. If he don't know you, you probably walk all the way up to him. But just make sure there's nobody around unless it's the people that you want to take out too. But remember though, you're only getting paid for that one person. So taking somebody else out, that's just a waste of a bullet. But I kept everything on, on, you know, quiet. About a couple of weeks later, I found out that uh, Pat also knew uh, that she knew people. I was like, oh, that might come in handy one day. So, of course, Oh, you see that in my time. But of course, uh, the the Curry brothers wasn't on my uh, list at that time. They came later on, but they was on my list. But they was cool with Patty and them, and uh, I had uh, met them through them over on uh, Wilshire at Pat Mama House, which Carl used to have his uh, car parked in her garage which I didn't know he had money in it. <laughs> but of course, later on, somebody told me, yeah, he be stashing his money. And I said, I don't care. And so basically, I kept an eye on them through, through, through you know, through that way. Found out more things about them. Then later on, this was much later on, it came up on the, uh, the thing about the white boy uh, working for the, you know, Federal government. Oh, yeah. And when he tried to buy something from one of our friends, and they said, man, why would he come buy stuff from us when he could buy it from them or go get it from them? I was like, yeah, that's that don't sound right. I was like, something going on with that boy. He said, yeah, man, I think he, uh, you know, working for the feds undercover. So, of course, when the Curry brother and them got started getting, you know, busted, I was like, oh, man, he telling on them. But, of course, at this time, they had already locked them. White boy. I ain't going to say his real name, but they already locked him up. And uh, the fallback was falling back up on them. And one thing led to another. He the one that was feeding them that information on them, even though I don't think he even admitted that he told but of course, you do your history, you see, yes, he told on them. That's why they really went down. But when you tell on a person, and you wind up doing more time than they do, something ain't right. So we had to dig more into that. That's when I found out that people of power was keeping their foot on that boy's neck to make sure that uh, he didn't never get out again. Even though they overturned that 650 law, well, if you get caught with it, you don't never see the world again. But they overturned that. He thought he was going to get out at that point in time. But, of course, he didn't. They just kept that foot on that boy's neck. But I had served my time and got out. I done jumped from one point to another. I'm just jumping all over this thing right now. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down to y'all here and there as time goes by. Same way with my, same way with my case over in Russia my arrest in Colombia, my connection in 
China. Oh, before I go any farther, please, y'all, do me a favor if you really want to hear more and care about the, about the lost brother. Uh, I need everybody to share and subscribe. Whether you like me or not, share and subscribe. I'm not quite sure many of my haters want to hear more. Many of the people that love me want to hear more. But I like to try to make this go viral. So if you share it and subscribe, maybe I could get something to go viral. If it go viral, oh, I'm going to be on him way more often. I'm going to really be on him. <laughs> Might even get you to go live. Now, see, that's what I was thinking about. Maybe I could go, well, if I could go viral, then you're like, maybe I can go live? Well, we could do it as live. So people uh, Comment send their talk. comments in, and then you're like, I can answer it right there. That'll be perfect. I can just sit back, have a blue screen, read from the comments, and answer people's comments right then and there that want to talk to me live. You talk to me live, appreciate you. I'd like to uh, hear from y'all. So, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank y'all very much. I'll be back with y'all real soon. Make it go viral.